everyone, thank you for joining us today. In this tutorial, you will learn some camera tips in V-Ray for Rhino. We will go through setting up the camera, how to use the depth of field effect, and the Rhino snapshots feature. Let's jump in. The first thing to do is to set the camera view. You can orbit around your scene, zoom in and out using the zoom command, or change the length of the lens. Once you find an appealing camera angle, you can save it as a named view. I will start the V-Ray interactive render mode to see the results. Now let's open the V-Ray asset editor to make some additional changes to the camera. At the moment, the image is overexposed. Some areas are way too bright, which is not optimal. This can be adjusted by using the exposure value slider. Alternatively, you can do it automatically by using the button next to the slider. You can also adjust the white balance automatically as well. If you need to remove any perspective distortion in your composition, you can do that by using the vertical tilt slider. Now the edges of the building are perfectly parallel and look much better. Now, with the camera view, together with its settings finalized, I will render a final image. For final outputs, you can just set the quality to high without the necessity for any additional adjustments. But what if you want to create a nighttime scene without creating a new separate file? That can be easily done with the snapshot feature. It allows you to save multiple variations of your scene and quickly switch between them. You can change the scale and position of models, adjust materials, lights, and much more. Go to the Snapshots panel. First, create a snapshot and call it Daytime. Now I will adjust the lights and turn the scene into a night composition. From the asset editor, I will disable the V-Ray sun and turn on this dome light that has been created in advance. I will also make the colors of the interior lights yellowish in color and increase their intensity. Lastly, unhide these layers that have additional light sources. Now this variation of the scene can be saved in the Snapshots panel and I call it Nighttime. You can create multiple variations and quickly switch between them and any adjustments you have created to the lights, materials, or layers will be applied automatically. Let's render to see the results. In this final part of the video, I want to showcase how to set up the depth of field effect and control the bokeh effect. Here, I have set a different camera. First, the depth of field needs to be enabled, which is done from the asset editor. You have multiple ways to determine the focus of the camera. I will use the fixed distance mode. You have to pick an object that you want the camera to focus on. First, make sure Snap by Vertex is enabled. This will help you precisely choose the focus target. Then click on this target icon and left click on an object of your choice. I will pick the lantern and now the camera is focused on it. From the defocus slider, you can determine the strength of the effect. Now, when the depth of field is set up, we can go to the bokeh settings. It can be found in the advanced camera parameters. By default, any lights in the background that are out of focus will appear perfectly circular. If you enable the blades effect, you can change the shape of the camera aperture by adjusting the number of blades. From the rotation slider, you can define the rotation of the blades. If you want to control the brightness on the edges, 
you can do that from the center bias controller. Positive values will make the outer edges of the bokeh effects brighter. And finally, from the anisotropy, you can stretch the bokeh effect vertically or horizontally, which is a typical characteristic of anamorphic lenses. Thanks for watching until the end. Hopefully, you have gathered some useful tips on how to use the V-Ray camera. See you soon. <laughs>